folks, welcome to my Pit Retro Journal. Um, today is uh, it's a few days before Christmas and I'm playing with uh, my ZX81. Uh, I'm doing a video in December and I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the ZX81 versus the original IBM PC and I wanted to demonstrate something. So here I'm demonstrating a, um, it's not really an MS-DOS version on the ZX81, but let me explain. Let me first show you what it does, right? So um, let's do a directory listing and see what's on there. Um, yeah, we've got a DOS directory and a MIST directory. So let's uh, let's cd into the DOS directory, and you gotta do shift space for uh, um, that, and then do a directory listing again. And uh, yeah, command icon. Let's see if auto exec that bat has anything in it. It has nine bytes in it, so it's got to have something in it. Uh, auto exec dot bat and uh, yep it's got echo on in it okay so can we uh, just run it uh, to exec hit turn right the echo on let's cd up a directory uh, space dot dot and let's do a directory of uh, IR. Uh, what's in MISC? Oh, I mistyped it. Oops. Okay. D I R. The other one was called MISC. Okay. Yeah, let's CD into that. CD. M I S K. Okay, and D I R. Huh? Okay, can we uh, type the letter? Uh, T Y P E L E T T E R dot T X T. And it's slow, it's a slow computer. Um, <clears throat> okay, it's uh, sincerely Clive. All right, well, what's the contact list? Uh, maybe try more if it's too long. Uh, contact. Uh, L S T bad command more. Oh, I misspelled contacts. M O R E space contacts. C O N T A C T S dot L S T. Oh, well, okay, so it's kind of fake. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> what else do we have? Um, we got a couple executables. All right, let's see what shooter is. Will it run? Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. Looks like it's drawing something. And... Uh, Okay, five eight and then fire. Okay, so you just line it up and it says zero is fire. Ah, okay, so it's a shoot 'em up game. And it's a little slow, but uh, yep, okay. And then I guess you move and fire. Oh, I see, and it's just going to keep hitting, uh, showing up random things. Uh, does it? Uh, what if you go the wrong? Does the game end if you don't hit that one? Um, what if I, oh, I see it brings the next one up. Okay, well let's quit that. All right. Okay, so yeah. So do I have MS DOS running on this machine? Um, I do not. Uh, this is just a, a program I wrote that simulates an, an environment. It's, it's about 5K of basic 
But I wanted to show you that you can write a command interpreter, and this is written in basic, it's not even written in, in machine code. And um, the reason I wanted to talk about this is I have the, um, this is a circuit board. And um, if you look at this, um, you know, it's small. It's got a uh, an edge connector for expansion. It's got a Z80. This is sort of a, a integrated logic chip that that combines a lot of off-the-shelf parts into a small chip. This is the ROM and this is the RAM. So it's a very video, very simple computer, right? In the digital analog end. Um, and um, if you look at um, the, uh, I'm going to put a picture up of the original um, PC uh, uh, from 1981, IBM PC. Yeah, you can see that it's a much bigger board. Um, it has a, a row of uh, soldered on chips, which is 16K of memory, and then it has a way to expand those. And it has a bunch of expansion slots. And instead of an integrated logic chip, it's got a bunch of other uh, smaller chips. And so the, it's a much bigger board. It's much more populated. But if you actually look at the specs between it and the ZX81, uh, that one ran at 4.77 megahertz for an Intel 8080. And coming back here, and this one ran at um, 3.25 megahertz for Zilog 80. And the Zilog 80 was actually a slightly more powerful processor, I've read. Um, and the difference between the ZX81 and the um, Zilog, uh, well, in the PC is that it was expense. You know, a plastic molded case, um, cheap keys. And if you wanted to expand it, you could expand the crap out of it in the back. I mean, I used to have a modem on here. Um, and other things you could buy also and you've seen on my channel i've I've had a printer on this and um uh and the printer you, you can put the printer uh, and the expander ram on the back of the printer so this thing just kind of expands in this direction but you could also get you know, there used to be whole stacks of things with modems and other things extra memory um, and there's even was one where you had an, an external disk drive and what's interesting is that uh, the PC, the original PC, was just like a, a lot of the TRS-80 uh, computers that if you didn't have a disk drive. And you saw me, uh, I wanna, uh, you know, I'll put a video up. Uh, the first time I used my Model 3, um, I didn't have any disks, so I just loaded BASIC in, into the, you know, the, the BASIC port, an audio, well, BASIC or cassette import. And the PC, the original PC also had that. And, and I guess my point here is that... Um, the difference between this computer and the first IBM PC was in upgradability. They put it in a large case. It was IBM, and they had a bunch of slots that you could put cards in. And then, of course, the ROM. They had a, 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 a let's go back to the picture. You can see they had a, a whole set of slots for, for ROM that you could put in uh, versus going back uh, to my desktop. You know, you had this so it, it was about making this as um inexpensive as possible and selling this for in the u.s the first under 100 dollar computer and then letting people expand what they wanted because you know it was inexpensive people ended up unfortunately not expanding it too much in fact it was i think it was commodore that when timex decided to sell these for 49 dollars commodore saw an opportunity and said hey we can give you a $50 discount if you buy yours and, and turn them in. And that was sort of the end for Timex. It's a really bad strategy, I think. But the point here being that this was not a toy computer. This was as, as real as an IBM PC. It's just that they decided not to put in a big metal case to make the circuit board smaller and have the, a single expansion slot as opposed to a whole row of them. And, um, you know, you could then run something like, I mean, you know, and they had a built-in ROM with BASIC, but you could replace this with a, um, a different ROM, and that ROM could be running MS-DOS. And now, you know, what is this that I've run? Um, I'll show you. It's just a little BASIC program I wrote. Um, and it's all, yeah, it's 5K of, uh, you know, it, it, it makes a little command interpreter that actually creates its own environment. And, you know, the files themselves are, uh, if, if I look at the directory listing, they're, they're all hard, you know, again, it's, it's a simulated environment, and it was just there to make a point. You can see that the directory for 
the top director, but it does keep track of which director you're in. Um, and, uh, um, and it's fully simulated. So there's, you know, you can't do anything other than uh, dir CD. You can clear your screen, type in more, and you can execute ex uh, running executables in there, just other programs in here. I didn't add machine code, but I could have uh, mostly basic programs. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the, and, and this is a pretty robust, like if I go space, 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 D I R space, 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 M I S C space, 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 space. It'll actually still parse that. It'll, it'll eat all the white, uh, um, uh, did not, <clears throat> oh, no, white crashed. I guess it's not so robust. Let's make sure that this actually still works. M I S C. Yeah, that works. So um, I thought I had this done. Uh, maybe there's still a bug in there, but uh, space, 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 D I R, space, 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 M I S C. Yeah, so that works. Uh, I don't know why, it, like, spaces at the end. I thought I did that. D, 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 I, R, M, I, S, C. Maybe it's spaces at the end of it and do. Maybe it's not fully working. No. Nope. I don't know why it crashed the last time. Uh, that's really weird. <laughs> uh, in any case, um, so I just wrote this little command interpreter in basic because, you know, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out if I can crash it again because I'm, that's the programmer in me. Um, no, so now it works. Isn't that weird? Um, and if I mistyped it, it should have just been, I don't think I mistyped it. D I R M I K S. Did I hit break by accident? I'll have to look at the video to see what's going Like if I do this, it would just do. Um, just say bad command. I don't think I hit break by accident. In any case, um, yeah, so this is just a, a little simulated environment that I wanted to create just to demonstrate that, um, uh, you know, what would a, a basic interpreter look like? Uh, so here, you did it again. But it's not break, right? Yeah, don't know. Must have a bug in my, my system. Uh, but that's, no, that's D, so yeah, I don't know. Um, but, uh, I'm not here to debug this, uh, CD, um, misc. I, I think I might be having some wobble problems. So it could be that because it was acting weird when I was playing with it. I didn't develop it on here. Um, so I don't know if, if it's just sort of, uh, if there's some, something weird going on. Um, uh, I did have a, this is my Christmas message to everyone. Hopefully it'll run. Um, yeah, it's just we'll, we'll scroll Merry Christmas. But um, now, again, the, the, there were upgrades for this. Um, let me show you the one that, uh, you know, there was a disk drive for this you could get. Let me show you what that looks like. And you can see that, yeah, you could. there was an entire operating system called um, ZX-DOS. And then uh, you could spend a lot of money to put, you know, five and a quarter floppies on this. And, and then there's, there's, a, there's another one which is kind of interesting, which is, um, somebody actually wrote a, a RAM disk operating system for this. I, I couldn't get it to run on the ZX81. I don't think they finished it. And I'm not quite sure if it required extra hardware, but I was able to get it to run on one of the, um, ZX81 emulators. It's called, uh, um, ZX uh, RAM disk operating system. And it basically creates an 8K RAM disk and then sticks files in there that you can run. And supposedly, then you should be able to save them while keeping the operating system going. But it's using the space between the ROM and the, the beginning of RAM, uh, 8192 to 16K. And I don't know yet what that means in terms of how is it using that, uh, because that's not writable. So... Well, anyway, I just wanted to uh, share that with you on, on Christmas, that this little ZX81... As, as much as it looked like a toy, it was actually, you know, a, a real computer that you could expand. And, you know, obviously it didn't become the next uh, great thing like the IBM PC did because everything 
nowadays any laptop you have that's Intel based, it's based off that original architecture in many ways. Um, and so, yeah, the little ZX81, um, you know, kind of had an end of life, but at the, at the beginning of it, you know, this, other than being a small circuit board, it had all the same ideas that the IBM PC had. So I thought that was pretty interesting. In any case, that's my video for December, right before Christmas. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a happy holidays and um, I'll see you next time.